Well, hello again. I thought I'd spend just a few minutes in this video uh, going over uh, the uh, the basics of the different effects uh, that the Easy Dock uh, has. Um, I'm not going to spend any time going over uh, each and every little parameter, uh, but rather just kind of show you an, an overview and how you can kind of tweak uh, the overall effect to suit your particular aircraft. So right now I'm in the, the Real Air Turbine Duke, uh, but what I've done is I've uh, exported the effects from the default mall aircraft. Uh, and uh, while I was in the mall, I was, of course, in the Easy Dock Studio. And on each of these uh, effects buttons, if you right-click, of course, that's how you get to uh, that main page. And then up here in the file, you can go ahead and, and do a, a full effect export uh, in whatever aircraft you're exporting from. Like I said, uh, for this uh, uh, scenario, I was, I was in the mall. And I did that for each of these effects. You have to uh, go and create a, a separate file uh, for each of these uh, settings. And then um, what you can do is when you get to the aircraft that you want to change, of course, you can go ahead and, and bring them uh, back in and import them uh, using uh, these uh, files that you've created. So right now, as it stands uh, in the Duke here, I'm, I'm, I haven't tweaked any of these effects yet. This is just how they, uh, they will look uh, using the, the settings from them all. Uh, now, in this uh, particular airplane, um, if you're going to be using the Duke, um, uh, to uh, tweak, which uh, some of you will, not everyone of course has it, but if you do happen to do this, I'm going to just show you a, a technique that I use. Now, uh, this is uh, a little bit off the subject of, of Easy Dock, but if you're going to do it in the Duke, uh, a few things you want to make sure is um, get those cowl flaps open, because uh, the technique that I use is kind of a bunch of uh, touch and goes and, and turning around and doing more, and, and uh, if you're going to set them up uh, in this particular airplane, you're going to uh, probably... Uh, get an engine failure here eventually. But something that does apply to, uh, to everybody's airplane, and I know that uh, some of you have seen this before because uh, I certainly have and I wasn't really sure what had happened, but uh, when you go to your exterior views in Easy Dock and you start getting these uh, funny looking airplanes and you're wondering uh, what the problem is, I just want to show you what happens. Now every time you uh, install a new aircraft after you install the Easy Dock, of course you're required to uh, run this uh, aircraft configurator tool again. But uh, it also happens uh, when you run a program like um, the Turbine Duke uh, configuration panel and you, and you make a change to, uh, to one of the options. Uh, what it does is that creates a new aircraft.config uh, file and, um, and that wipes out all of those uh, easy dock settings. Uh, every time you run this uh, configurator panel, of course, it creates a, an extra block of settings in your aircraft config file. So by running uh, a program like this, uh, you overwrite that file, and uh, now I would be required to uh, just run this uh, configure FSX uh, button. And then when I load up uh, uh, the Duke again, or any airplane that uh, you've changed that uh, uh, config file, um, this view will go They'll, they'll go back to normal. You'll see it normally. But sometimes that throws people off. They think it's a bug or something. But actually, it's just because that little block of, of uh, settings has been uh, deleted somehow into your aircraft config file. Um, so anyways, uh, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to run up and down uh, the, uh, the runway here and take off and land and just see how these settings work for me uh, before I, I start tweaking them. And then after uh, you kind of get an idea of where you're starting, then you can start uh, making some changes and, and seeing how they work for you. So all I'm going to do is uh, just take off. And uh, this technique that I'm using is you know, not necessarily how you'd actually fly the airplane. This isn't really about uh, flying the airplane uh, perfectly well. It's just about uh, setting up your camera. So you, know, you can see already that uh, to me this is just kind of too bumpy. I mean, this is obviously a pretty smooth runway, you know, but it looks like it's just kind of full of potholes right now. So I'm not going to clean up or anything. I still got the gear down. Uh, field elevation at this airport was at 300 feet, so I'm only going to go up about 500. I'm going to get my flaps out and kind of configure for landing, put the nose over, then I'm going to go into the slew mode. So in order for me to be able to do this relatively quick, uh, quickly and not uh, waste too much time, I'm just going to slew back um, until I uh, see the vast, he turns uh, red over uh, white, and that puts me in a pretty good position to to set up for a landing. And, and then I just kind of keep doing this back and forth. Uh, it saves a lot of time, and uh, it allows you to kind of see the settings quickly, and then you just take off from the other end 
Uh, but you'll see what happens here when I, I release the slew. Um, I'm already configured, and I'm pretty close to the speed I need to be at. And uh, then I can just kind of watch the settings as I come in for landing here. I'm trying to, you know, fly the airplane the way I'm, I'm supposed to, of course. But, but more importantly, I'm just kind of getting a, a feel for what these settings will do. And um, uh, each time I, I take off uh, and land, I can change my uh, Easy Dock settings. And uh, it doesn't take a whole lot of time uh, by doing it this way. And uh, I'll just kind of try to, you know, do a, a relatively smooth landing just to see just how how bumpy these settings uh, in Easy Dock are. thought that was a relatively smooth landing, and, and it looks a little bit uh, bumpy, so I'm going to make some adjustments to that camera. And going down the runway like this, you can still kind of see that uh, it's a little bit bumpy than I think uh, an airplane like this traveling down on the runway like this should be. So I'm going to take off again. Now I'm not going to bring the gear up or the flaps uh, or anything like that. I'm just going to stay configured, um, go up to about 500 feet, um, push the nose over so I can see. And then uh, go ahead and hit my slew button. Turn the aircraft around, back it up, watch the VASI, and as soon as I get that red over white, I'm already in a position for my next landing. It works uh, pretty well. So what I'm going to do is uh, come to my uh, studio here. Uh, go to your, whatever effect you want to do. Now, I'm not going to go over uh, each and every effect here. You can uh, read them for yourself, of course. This is actually a... a a page of the uh, the advanced effects manual. I just showed it uh, here for you, just because you can see the three different effects and how they're defined. Uh, there's no reason for me to to uh, go over that because you can read it just as easily for yourself. Um, but the three different effects that we're going to be working with. Um, oh, wrong one. Let me get it back here. There we go. Are the uh, the random effect, the dynamic uh, head movement, and of course the camera resonance. Uh, now. What I'm finding uh, to be the easiest way to do this is just kind of ignore all these settings in here. These have already been uh, tweaked for you, so to speak, from the developer. I mean, when, when he uh, you know, wrote the program and, and created some basic effects for the, the default aircraft, uh, he did a lot of that work for you. So getting into this part of it really is, I don't know, is of no value to me right now. I mean, if you really want to get to uh, the specifics behind, you know, the, the body Y, head Y, X, and Z, the three different axes and, and the different signals, I mean, that's, you know, you know, up to you, of course. But what I'm more concerned with is this global gain because this basically changes all the effects uh, at once, obviously. Uh, so in order for you to change that, of course, you do need to click on, on Edit. Now, of course, we're in the air, so this uh, on air uh, profile is, is already selected. If we're on the ground, of course, this would be uh, selected by default. But this global gain is going to affect both of them. Uh, so whether you uh, are on air or on ground, um, as you change uh, this, this value here, you know, it's going to stay selected for uh, whether you're in the air or on the ground. Um, but you'll see that these values of over here, of course, are changing, uh, whether you're in the air or on the ground. But there again, I'm, I'm kind of ignoring these for now. I'm just changing the overall effect. Uh, so what you really want to start with is just kind of tweak this global gain. And, of course, I'm going to set it uh, down a little bit from where it started just because I thought it was uh, just a little bit too bumpy. And then uh, when you're done, you just click on the Edit button again, and that will save this uh, global gain uh, then we can do that for each of these different effects. Uh, now, these dynamic uh, head movement effects, uh, there again, if you want to start working with these, you know, go for it. But uh, as far as I'm concerned, I'm just concerned about this main level here, uh, the overall effect. Uh, and um, just by tweaking this uh, particular uh, value here, you can uh, just kind of lessen that, that effect of, of your uh, head moving as you, you know, land uh, or whatever. Now, now these effects are... Um, affected by the weather that you put into a uh, uh, flight simulator. So uh, we'll have to um, look at those uh, again as we change the weather. Uh, but for now, we can do uh, that. And then, of course, this camera resonance, uh, same thing. The only one I'm really concerned about right now is the level. So I might just tweak this, this level down a bit. And then from this point, uh, we can go ahead and uh, close this up.
uh, take ourselves off the slough and uh, come back in for landing. We're already kind of set up and somewhat stabilized. I'll pull my power back, of course, uh, to get her back where she needs to be. But like I said, this is not so much about technique as it is just getting uh, the aircraft uh, on the ground and in the air uh, a number of different times so we can test out the settings. And we'll see uh, how this one looks. That looked a little better. It wasn't quite as choppy on, on the touchdown. So, so we're you know, moving in the right direction as far as setting these effects up. So what I'll do is I'll just you know bring the power back up, go up for uh, another landing, and about the time I get to 120 knots, because I've got every, I've got all the flaps out. So of course I'm not cleaning up and reconfiguring. I'm just just taking off. So 120 knots uh, in this particular airplane works well with all of our gear down and, and flaps out and everything. Like I said, about 800 feet. I just apply the same technique. Just bring the power back, bring the nose over, hit the slew button, twist her around, come on back, and when I see that Vassy red over white, then I'm in a pretty good position. So uh, that's how I'm uh, adjusting the uh, the settings. Now I'll I'll stop here for this uh, video, and I'll 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 continue on in the next one, uh, and just kind of clean up a few little details about uh, the effects in uh, EasyDoc.